Hey everyone, Sam here at Model Chili Scalar Models, and here is Italeri's USS Essex from the World of Warships line. Now this is 1 to 700 scale, so it should be quite sizable, but not too big. I just want a nice quick little project while I'm currently in lockdown. Um, first of four weeks, at least. So let's see what we've got. So, decal sheet. Now, pretty simple. There's a flag there. Some World of Warships logos. I uh, haven't actually played much of World of Warships. I um, I do play it on PlayStation, but uh, I haven't really spent that much time with it. So a this is a um, an included poster. Just a nice colour printout of the uh, USS Essex in action. So yeah, nice little bonus. Not really needed. Now the instruction book. Um, actually no, this is like a um, the same thing I got with a Word of Tanks kit is actually um, just a sort of a guide on the game, some of the basics some information about some of the ships, the weak spots etc, some information on the Essex itself and just lots of prom promotional stuff and a um, free code here for the PC version, so first come first serve there you go, you can pause that and try and use one of those. Help yourself. Here's the actual instruction book. Now I believe this is an old reboxed trumpeter kit. So there's nothing new or revolutionary in this particular version. Step by step, building up the aircraft carrier. Now I've gone ahead and I've um, taken all the sprues out of the plastic. So I just quickly go through them each, each one. So it's uh, looking pretty detailed for um, such a small scale. There's no photo which included, it's all plastic. So there's going to be lots of um, nice fiddly work to do, which is always fun. And it's getting bigger and bigger, so looks like some of the side of the hull, the hangar deck. It's all pretty um, basic structures. And parts for the stand, the flight deck top, punch out for the elevator, another piece of the flight deck. Part of the lower hangar deck, I believe. And so here's the top half of the main hull. So the reason I went for this particular kit is um, I actually just wanted a full hull model. A lot of um, these 1 to 700 warships sort of cut off at the waterline, and um, I wanted a full to go all the way down to the bottom, so that's one of the reasons I chose this particular one because there's not too many of them. And so here's the hangar deck there, and yes, you can see here trumpeter logo 2004, so it's quite an old kit. And so here's the lower hull. Focus would be nice. Name plate. And two sprues, no, four sprues each for the two different planes. There's, uh, I think there's Hellcats and Corsairs. And finally, just a little bottle of glue. Right, so let's get started. Okay, so what I'm planning to do is just start building up um, the main parts of construction, attaching as many pieces as I can before I need to start painting, just to save a lot of um, fiddly work trying to glue together painted pieces and stuff. So 
I'll probably start attaching all of this together and then prime it and then give it a base coat. And then probably attach the flight deck because there's going to be a lot of parts that will be hard to paint once the flight deck's down. And then uh, repeat the process. And yeah, so there's going to be there's going to be a lot of construction, so I'll just um just record bits and pieces of me putting it together, and then I'll pause when it comes to painting. All right, so the tools I'll be using for construction are some Tamiya extra thin cement to glue everything together, a nice sharp hobby knife. A pin vise to drill out some holes, and some sandpaper, um, this is 360 grit, just to clean up some of the uh, flesh around the edges of these parts. Okay, so I've already encountered a bit of an issue where I've got to place the hanger deck down onto the upper hull, but um, it actually has to sit on a lip uh, between these two pieces, but it just doesn't seem to want to fit. It um, will fit one side, and then if I try to squeeze it in the other side, it'll just pop out again. So, so the kit's probably warped a little bit, or just shrunk or something so if it's nicely at the back so what I might do is just do it in stages so I'll just glue the back down and then just glue it up as it dries and then so it doesn't keep popping out every time every time I try to squeeze it in because it's such a large piece All right, so here's where I am so far. So most of the main structure has been put together. Um, there's been quite a few gaps here and there. This little big one there I've got to fill in. The yeah, hands are all dusty from lots of sanding. But there's a quite a big gap along here where this part of the, um, the hull 
wasn't flush with the lower part, which I think it pretty much needs to be. So that was just due to this part being one piece and it was slightly bent, so a little of this structure behind it, it was kind of hard to bend it back out, so I really had to twist it as far as I could. But there's still quite a big lip there, so I've filled it mostly in with Tamiya Putty, just basic type, and sanded that back. So there's still a little bit of a line there, but it's mostly covered up now. Hopefully with a bit of weathering that'll I'll mask that up a bit more. And yeah, so um, I've left a lot of the hanger doors open just to give the model just a bit of depth and a bit of uh, a bit of, um, somewhere just to peek your eyes through. I might put uh, one or two planes under there once everything's gone down. And along here, there's still more gaps, but it wasn't too bad, so I just basically filled it up with um, Vallejo plastic putty just into the lines between the gaps and uh, that doesn't need to be sanded just let it dry and wipe it away I might just need to do a bit more along here so you have all of the um, hanger doors you had to um, fill in so well cover up so you could leave them open if you want so I've left some of them closed and a lot of them open on this side most of them closed on this side now that might, might not be 100% historically accurate, <laughs> I really don't know if these sailed around with all of the doors open or not, but um, I just wanted to leave them open just so you can actually see inside, because there's quite a lot of structure in here in the hangar deck, which is quite cool, you can see a lot, and, but there's quite a few um, sort of ejection mould um, circles along the back of these parts, which I might might think about covering up just with a little bit of sheet styrene just so you don't see those when you're looking through yeah so there's quite a large um, mold line down this lower hull down the middle and then across the back so I've just been sending those away in some ejection pin marks there so I'll attach this uh, before I start painting it and then I've just been constructing lots and lots of tiny gun emplacements and so they fiddle around the side like here there's a small construction there's two different sized guns big ones here and smaller ones there and they'll just be dotted all around the ship and then um, yeah, I think I'm getting close to start priming Alright, so that's the lower half all constructed, filled in, sanded, and ready for priming. All of the extra bits and guns and defences and all of that have been attached. Cranes, lots and lots of little parts. Quite fiddly, but uh, not too troublesome. And I tried my best to get this um, step between the lower hull and the rest of it as flush as possible, just with sanding. There were no gaps or anything, it was just a um, just a bit of an overhang. I tried as much as I could, but it was just, um, it was just too much of a step there. It's not too bad, but um, hopefully the, uh, the black line between the, the grey and the red will sort of hide that a little bit in painting.
So it went together mostly all right. There was quite a few gaps, quite a few um, misaligned parts, as you can see. But overall, with a bit of filling and a bit of elbow grease, you can get them mostly lined up and filled in. Got a huge gap between these bits here that I had to fill in. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So now it's off for priming, and then I can start on the flight deck. And for priming, I'm using my trusty Tamiya Fine Surface Primer from a spray can. And so I've just finished putting together these banks of guns that uh, surround the ship. Pretty fiddly stuff. And so here's just a closer look at the island superstructure, all complete with its mini guns, spotlights, rangefinders, communications equipment, cutting edge radar, and 
and a smokestack. So yeah, not quite as detailed as um, Fredo Itch would have been, but um, I'm still pretty happy with how detailed it's come out for an all plastic kit. And so now that just sits over here. All right, so with the uh, island attached, the uh, flight deck is now ready for priming. And I haven't attached the elevators yet, mainly because I haven't quite decided what position I want them to be in. I think I might, for the back one, have it sort of half raised and show a plane in there, just to give it a bit more depth. And for the front one, I think I actually might leave that raised, just so I can have a couple of planes taking off from the front. And yeah, so um, I'm just priming, and then I can start spraying. Okay, so now I'm going to start painting. I'm going to start with a base undercoat of Vallejo Model Air Basic Black. Then the lower hull with uh, Fire Red, 71084. And the rest of the hull, uh, 71307 Medium Sea Grey.
All right, so that's all of the main painting done. And what I ended up doing was I painted the top and the flight deck with the medium sea grey. And then just for the hull along the sides, I used a bit of a lighter, uh, light gull grey 71121, just to lighten it up a little bit compared to the top. And the masking came out nice and crisp, so I'm really happy with that. And I've also painted up some of the elevator platforms and the rudder. And before I start detail painting and weathering, I'm going to seal everything in with a coat of Tamiya's Clear Coat TS13, which is a gloss enamel-based clear coat. All right, so the clear coat has gone down and been left to dry. So what I'm going to do now is just a few bits of detail painting. It doesn't really need a lot, since a lot of the smaller details are all just supposed to be grey. And that includes all of the guns, all of the little life rafts that sit under here. I've locked all of these up and <laughs> they're all just grey. Same as the ship colour. So I'm going to uh, paint the top of the funnel and also clean up the end of the, uh, the waterline marking here, which didn't quite get in masking. So I'll just hand paint around there. And then I can move on to applying a wash. All right, so before I put down a wash and weathering, I need to place all of the deck decals down. Now with all of the decals done, I'm just going to help them set with an application of Microsoft. All right, so moving on to weathering, I'm just going to start with um, Vallejo Model Wash Light Grey. I just want to start nice and light, um, just so I don't accidentally overdo it, just to see where it goes. So I've just got a, um, a wide flat brush, and I'm just going to 
brush down over the hull just to create a bit of streaking and I'm not going to I'll just leave it like this I'll wait for it to um, mostly dry up and then I'll go back and clean it up and straighten it out bits and pieces um, later on because I'm applying this on a gloss enamel coat then any cleanup I do will will not affect the um the grey paint underneath so I'm pretty safe to play with this and manipulate it and clean it up as it dries. I'll also go in with a finer brush and um, put a wash in all of these detailed pieces just to make them pop out a bit more. And if this dries up too light, then I might um, add a bit more to it later on or add some more darker colours. But I just want to see how this looks once it's all dried up. Alright, so here's how the first pass is looking. And I'm thinking that's looking pretty good so far. Done quite a bit of streaking on this side. And I was just going over with the brush once it was mostly dry and just brushing down. Now I'm adding just a little bit of acrylic thinner to the brush, just if it wasn't moving quite as much as it should. Then it gets it moving really easy. And the other side. There, yeah, looking a bit lighter, but it's... Um, I'm fine with it being slightly uneven because it's just a little bit more realistic for natural weathering. So the next step I'm going to do is a bit of dry brushing. So I've got the uh, the light skull grey that I used earlier on the sun brush, and I'm just going to remove as much of the paint as I can on the paper towel and then just to brush over some of these raised areas and also add a bit of light coloured streaking to the hull just for a bit of variation It may not be light enough since I um, did a coat of the same colour on this part anyway. So I might just use this to stick it on the, um, the darker areas. And I'm just going to go back and remove some of this streaking from the the red section since this is supposed to be underwater so it's not going to have a lot of downward facing weathering on it. Okay, so this time I'm going to try white grey 71119 just to get a really nice light grey. And just doing the same thing.
Right, so while I'm waiting for that to dry up, I'm going to move on to the flight deck. And what I'm going to do first is do a very thin um, coat of the base coat, medium sea grey, just over some of these decals just to fade them up a bit because they look very fresh and very clean. So as part of the weathering process, I'm just going to fade them using the uh, base colour over the top. And again, it'll be thinned down with acrylic thinner, just so I don't um, cover them up completely. And now I'm just going to lightly stain the deck with a mix of the medium sea grey base coat with a little bit of dirt, 71133. Using the same mix, just adding a touch of black. Right, so I've uh, reapplied a gloss coat over the um, airbrushing and I've just been experimenting with um, different colours of wash just to really bring out the lines that run across the deck because uh, they're really kind of faint and a normal wash isn't going to hold. So I've just been putting different colours on and then once they're mostly set just running across with a, um, a wide flat brush just to bring out those lines and just doing it multiple times in different uh, directions just to kind of average out the lines to get them mostly straight. But I think uh, I'm going for this colour here, which is the um, Vallejo Model Wash Dark Grey. And so I'm just going to apply that um, along the whole flight deck.
So I'm just adding a bit of acrylic thinner to the brush just to help move it and thin it down a little bit. Alright, so that's all of the main weathering applied. Now I'm just going to do a few touches of rust using Vallejo Model Wash Rust.
All right, so that's all of the propellers and rudder attached. And I've done just a little bit more rust streaking. And so I'm pretty happy with the weathering for the main hull now. It's pretty much complete. So I've got some dark streaking, some light streaking, and a bit of rust. And upon a bit more research, I've found out that the inner bulkheads are pretty much white in the hangar deck. So I've just sprayed the area that you're going to see through the... Um, the top elevator platform and I've glued the elevator down to the deck so that's ready to transport the plane up to the uh, flight deck and to this part here I've detailed up with, just with some rods of um, styrene and just cut those to shape to uh, size and then just laid them across that wall there just to make it look a bit more detailed And so when the top is on, that's how that looks through there. And yeah, so I did a bit of streaking and rusting on the main island superstructure. And I think I'm pretty much ready to call this ship done. Of course, I've got to put on a final protective flat coat over the whole thing. And then a little bit of rigging for the um, masts. But yeah, so now it's time to move on to the planes. Right, so for these what I'm going to do is build up each plane individually and then prime and paint it. And that's because for a majority of these planes I'm going to actually convert them so the wings are folded up. So they'll just be sitting at the back of their flight deck. In a, the storage position. So for the Corsairs I'm going to have to cut off the wing near the base and then fold it up. And for the Hellcats I'm going to have to uh, fold them back. I think there's a little bit of a step in the cut but I'm not sure if I'll bother doing that or if that's going to be too fiddly. Um, but yeah so I'll build each of these up and then get on to priming. Now the tricky bit is to glue the wing back on in the folded position. Just going to place it there and let it set for a little bit and then try and bend it a bit more closed.
All right, so here's how the Corsair is looking with its wings up and wheels and propeller on. And so that's all of them complete, and there's one of the wings down, ready for takeoff. Pretty fiddly, but uh, manageable in the end. So now I'm going to move on to the Hellcats and do the same, cut the wings off, fold them back, and then attach the wheels and propellers. Okay, so with all of the planes constructed, I've stuck them down on this masking tape just to stop them blowing about once I give them a layer of uh, Tamiya primer. So now that the primer is on, I'm going to spray them all with Vallejo Model Air 71111 USAF Light Blue. And now with everything painted, I'm going to brush over this Vallejo model wash, blue-grey colour over each one. And that's just straight on the paint. I'm not going to do a, um, a clear coat like I usually do before a wash because I kind of want this to blend into the, um, the colour a little bit. Okay, so I've let the wash dry, and now I'm going to just give the um, the top sides of these planes a coat of the Tamiya Gloss Clear, and then I can move on to the decals. Right, so now they're nice and glossy, ready for some decals. Now the kit itself didn't actually come with any decals for the planes, which was a bit disappointing. Um, but what I do have is an old um, Enterprise carrier kit from Tamiya. That I've had for ages that um it's just a waterline model so it doesn't have the full health so wasn't really that interested in building it but what it does have is decals for the planes just the uh, insignia for the uh, US Navy so I'm going to go and use these on these planes and if I ever come to build the Enterprise then I'll just have to come up with a different solution for those so uh, I won't be needing all of the insignia for each plane. So for example, for the underside of the wings, 
for these ones I won't bother putting one under there because you're not going to be able to see it once it's glued onto the deck and yeah so I think I've got enough for every plane so I'm just going to go ahead and start doing those now And now that the decals are on, I'm just going to paint in a few details like the canopy, the propeller, and the wheels, just to finish the planes up. Alright, so I finally glued the flight deck onto the main hull and unfortunately there's a bit of a gap um, under here and back here a little bit. Just I think the flight deck piece was slightly warped. I can kind of push it down but it requires too much force to, for glue to rely on alone and I can't really clamp it so the gap's not too big. I think I'm just going to leave the gap and just use a bit of the uh, Vallejo putty to fill that in. And then I uh, paint over it and touch it up to blend in, and that should uh, cover that up nicely. And in the process of gluing this down, I um, managed to break off the side elevator, which I'm not too bothered about because I think I'm going to prefer it in the raised position. I think that looks better. There's a more complete flight deck up there, so I'm just going to re-glue that up there. Fill in the gap and then I can start um, applying a flat coat to the ship.
All right, so the flight deck has been glued on, the gap's been filled in, and now it's time to finally give everything a flat coat of Tamiya's flat clear TS-80 from a spray can. So I just finished up the planes by giving them a layer of Tamiya's semi-gloss clear TS-79, just to give them a little bit of a sheen. So they're all finished and now it's time to stick them all to the flight deck. And I'm going to use just a little bit of just some general white glue which will keep them attached to the flight deck but will allow me to remove them later on if I want to reposition them or make any other adjustments. So it's not a um, permanent gluing solution but it'll hold them on for now. All right, so there she is, finally all complete. And the stand was just a simple construction. I just painted that in matte black to finish that off. Nothing too fancy, just pretty simple. And yeah, so uh, I'm really happy with the overall look. Something about building these ships is uh, it's really enjoyable, especially at the scale that um, it's not as big as a 1350 scale. So obviously it doesn't take as much time or effort or money but it's still a good size to uh, sit on the shelf and it still provides lots of detail um you could go really far with this with photo etch and all the rigging and um, lots of smaller details but uh i pretty much just built this out of the box with the exception of the um the plane decals of course but everything else was just part of the kit and i still think it come i still think it comes out to a pretty impressive overall uh, kit so yeah as always let me know what you think um, i'm sure there's quite a few historical inaccuracies with the paint scheme the type of planes the color of the planes i really really wasn't too bothered about keeping it 100 percent accurate because you can take it takes a lot of time and research to figure some of these things out just um looking up the interior detail of the elevators took a long time to just get even scraps of information but anyway I'm uh, happy with the overall look um, quite happy with the weathering it's uh, quite apparent but not too over the top nice bit of rusting rust and streaking so just coming in for a closer look and um, if I was to do it again I probably would do the deck maybe slightly darker than what, I've, than what I've done here. 
Now the weathering in the wash didn't darken it quite as much as I would have liked, but um, I still think it came out okay. And I quite like how the planes or the aircraft are slightly shinier than the rest of the ship. Just, just gives them a nice sort of glossy painted, maybe even slightly wet, covered in sea salt feeling. And yeah, the decals really added to the detail of these planes. It's really disappointing that the kit didn't come with any. Because without them they would look quite sort of not right. So I'm glad I had those spare. At least. It's kind of funny because this kit came with all of the decals for the deck. The numbering and all the, um, the strip decals. But the Enterprise didn't have any decals for the ship. There was no number, there was no deck detail, but it did have decals for the aircraft, so it was kind of um, opposite to this kit. So, um, yeah, if you combine the two, <laughs> you finally get a complete set. So there's the underside, pretty simple really, just the propellers and the rudder. And you can kind of see into the side of the hangar deck, just a little bit there. Quite pleased with how that looks, especially the interior white bulkhead there. Yeah, so there's a lot of the stuff like these um these masts and a lot of the cranes and guns and all that could really benefit from a bit of photo etch. But that just wasn't really the scope that I laid out for this kit. Maybe next time, if I uh, start to get into these carriers, I might spend a bit more time and money detailing these up. Because I think I might stick to this scale. As I said before, it's a nice mix of affordability and size. I mean, I really like the 350 Enterprise that I did a while ago, but it's like any more of those, I just wouldn't have the room for them. I've barely got enough room for the one. But yeah, I'd be really interested in getting um, the uh, Yorktown class Enterprise to go alongside this one. Alright, so I think that wraps up this video. Um, it's my first build for 2020. I know it's been quite a while but um, since my last build, but you know, we're... Uh, in interesting times at the moment. We're currently in week three of a four week minimum lockdown in New Zealand. So uh, buying model supplies and kits has been pretty much impossible in the last three weeks. So I'm quite looking forward to when that's lifted. Um, just out of interest, New Zealand you know, coronavirus cases are getting fewer and fewer by the day. So it's looking really promising. So fingers crossed that, that trend continues for now. And uh, I'll be going, getting back to science fiction on my next build, for sure. So, um, yeah, there's a, been a brief diversion from <laughs> my usual sci-fi content. But I hope you've enjoyed it, nonetheless. So until next time, thanks for watching, and take care.